Inter-Office Memorandum Subject Marketing of Nuclear Plant Technology and Personnel Training Date June 4, 1985 from GT Gon Tau Omicron FDMX CCEJ Siskin This is a follow-up to a discussion the writer had with our chairman Mr. William Allen during the Dynamion Society dinner last year. During that discussion, the writer suggested that Stone and Webster consider selling nuclear power plant technology to the People's Republic of China through training programs. Such programs will help to sustain the productivity and the morale of many of our people through the next few years and generate substantial new business for our company. Mr. Allen asked the writer to prepare a report and send it to him through the New York office manager. Attached is my report. After your approval, please forward the report to Mr. Allen through Mr. Ed Siskin. The said report has been reviewed by Dr. William Haven previously the chairman and the head of the Nuclear Physics Department of Columbia University, and Mr. Sham Lal, an adjunct professor of New York University Graduate School of Business Administration and an international management consultant. Both Dr. Haven and Mr. Lal are my neighbors and personal friends. George T. Ken Senior Power Engineer GTK, ATT Attachment Inter-Office Memorandum Subject Marketing of Nuclear Plant Technology and Personnel Training Date June 4, 1985 from GT Gon Tau Omicron WF Allen, JR. CCJC Lee Summary The present depressed market for power plant construction in the U.S. is likely to persist into the early 1990s. During the coming years, Stone and Webster will be facing increasing competition, not only from within the U.S., but also from abroad. To enhance its competitiveness in the marketplace, it is vital that Stone and Webster preserves its technical excellence and retains its best people. The writer believes that providing technology and personnel training to developing countries can help to achieve this objective. From all indications, it is almost certain that there will be a shortage of electricity in the U.S. in the 1990s. In view of this shortage, it is essential that nuclear power remains to be one of the viable option to meet this need. In a recently published report on nuclear power, Edison Electric Institute concluded that the U.S. must take steps now to make nuclear power an option which utilities can consider for the future. To accomplish this objective, the report offered a course of actions to be taken. Presently there is a need in the People's Republic of China, PRC, for nuclear power plant technology. The initial market for this technology, including personnel training, is estimated to be about $300 million. For Stone and Webster, providing nuclear technology and personnel training to the PRC will bridge the gap between now and the 1990s. In addition, it will allow the company to participate in the long-term growth and development of the nuclear industry in China. In the following report, the scope of the marketable Stone and Webster nuclear power plant technology is described. A typical scenario of on-the-job type training in a project environment is also presented. Dash 2 In the writer's opinion, the opportunity is so significant that we should take a closer look into it. Present conditions due to the severely depressed market for power plant construction, the four largest architect engineer firms in the U.S. have drastically scaled down their operations over the past two years by reducing the number of their employees. To date, the difficulties which besieged the electric power industry regulations, high costs, cash shortages, and public opposition, are still present. It appears that new orders for power plant construction will not be forthcoming until the early 1990s. Future outlook in assessing the need for nuclear power, a recent EEI report too concluded that the U.S. will need between 100 million and 200 million kilowatts of additional generating capacity before the year 2000. To meet this need, the report said, the U.S. must take steps now to make nuclear power an option which utilities can consider for the future. According to the report, nuclear power can play an important role in providing reliable electric service at the lowest cost to consumers. To accomplish this objective, the report offered a course of actions to be taken. Among the many recommendations, the nuclear industry is urged to adopt standardized design for future nuclear plants. NRC policy for 1985 with its goal to achieve more effective licensing, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission policy of 1985 strongly encourages the industry to pursue standardization in future nuclear plant design.
presently changes are being made by NRC to reduce the time and the cost required to construct future nuclear plants. During the remainder of 1980s, the NRC will seek to reform the licensing legislation, finalize a procedure for reviewing standardized plant design, and place increased emphasis on industry self-regulation. Thus, building nuclear plants in the future could conceivably be much easier than it is today. Three Stone and Webster's stakes in nuclear power Despite the almost non-existent market for power plant construction in the U.S. today, Development Innovation Technology Transfer, a subsidiary of the giant Electricité de France, EDF, formed its North American operation in 1984. Based on a recent presentation by Mr. Eric Thibault, General Manager of the North American Operation, at the ASME New York Metropolitan Section Dinner Meeting on May 9, 1985, it is apparent that EDF is presently poised for capturing a share of the future U.S. nuclear business. In the face of this increased competition, it is vital that Stone and Webster preserves its technical excellence and retains its best people. But how are we to preserve our excellence when there is a lack of engineering and design work, and when experienced people are leaving the company? The writer believes that marketing technology, i.e., providing technology and personnel training to developing countries, is one of the solutions. Nuclear technology market in the PRC China Daily reported recently that the PRC expects to build at least six nuclear power plants by the year 2000. Their first project, the Kinchin Nuclear Plant, a domestically designed 300 MW pressurized water reactor plant, is presently under construction and is expected to begin operation by 1989. A contract to build two additional nuclear plants has been awarded, with EDF to supply the two 900 MW pressurized water reactors, PRW. The plants will be built in Guangdong Province in southern China. Gibbs and Hill has been awarded a contract to provide limited consulting services and to assist in the purchase of equipment and in supplier negotiations. The contracts for the remaining three plants have not yet been awarded. The potential market for these three plants represents about $6 billion. PRC is presently very much interested in obtaining U.S. technology and personnel training to support their nuclear development program. While their engineers and scientists are well read in the technical literature, they lack practical experience and need help from outside. For however, the difficulty for the PRC has been their inability to obtain technology and training without a reactor sales agreement. In this regard, an arrangement with Stone and Webster would provide their access to our scientists and engineers without having to purchase equipment. Presently U.S. companies are not allowed to sell nuclear plant equipment and nuclear fuel to the PRC, because an agreement between the U.S. and the PRC for the peaceful uses of nuclear energy has not yet been signed by President Reagan. What the PRC really appear to be interested in is to develop a scientific and engineering base of trained people to carry out their industrial development programs. They would like to build the next three nuclear plants themselves if they have the technology and the trained people. One of the reasons for this is to conserve their foreign exchange reserves. With this in mind, the market for nuclear technology and personnel training in the PRC can be estimated. To be conservative, let us assume that the next three nuclear plants to be built will be identical the cost of the engineering services to engineer these plants is approximate 6-8% to of the investment. If the PRC can engineer these plants themselves, they will save this amount of foreign exchange. Using a figure of 5% for this cost, the market for the technology and personnel training comes to $300 million. In 1981, Stone and Webster lost the bid on a technology transfer package on two coal-fired power plant projects in the PRC. The package consisted of engineering services, personnel training, and technical document transfer. Abasco won the contract which, according to a reliable source, was $10 million. As a rule of thumb, the ratio of man-hours required to engineer a nuclear plant and that required to engineer a coal-fired plant is approximately 30, i.e., 15 million man-hours for a nuclear plant versus 0.5 million man-hours for a coal-fired plant. Multiplying this ratio and the $10 million Abasco contract price yield the same $300 million arrived at earlier. 
5. Scope of SNW Nuclear Plant Technology The main consideration in marketing of technology is identifying the products and the services which the buyers really want and need. We must understand their needs from them, i.e., not what we want to sell them, but what they want to buy from us. Recently the PRC has pursued a decentralized approach to industrial management. To find out their needs for technology, we must go to their people in the regional planning level. One such organization is the Shanghai Nuclear Engineering Research and Design Institute, which designed the Kinchin nuclear plant. The chief engineer of this organization presently is Mr. Wu Yang Yu. Point six, since all the nuclear plants being built and under contract in the PRC use the pressurized water reactors, it appears reasonable to assume that the PRC can take advantage of our nuclear plant technology, which has been proven through the years to produce safe and reliable systems. Following is a partial list of the subject matters which are marketable through training programs. 1. Safety classes, single failure criteria, and redundancy requirements. 2. Code requirements for nuclear power plants. 3.10 CFR 50 requirements. 4. Flow diagram, system codes, equipment codes, and line designation. 5. Documentation and record management. 6. Piping design, analysis and fabrication 7. Safeguard analysis 8. Criteria and design of nuclear plant subsystems 9. Equipment performance and evaluation 10. Seismic analysis 11. Applications of SNW developed computer programs 12. Plant layout and optimization 13. Modeling 14. Power plant economics 15. Project management 16. Estimate and cost control Q quality assurance and quality control 1. Fire protection of nuclear plants 6. 1. Construction management 2. Acceptance tests for equipment and systems 3. Nuclear waste management 4. Health physics 5. Startup and operator training Training in the above subject matters can be augmented by the use of the following Stone and Webster proprietary documents as support materials 1. Stone and Webster Division Technical Guidelines 2. Stone and Webster Master Specifications 3. Stone and Webster Developed Computer Programs and Computer Programs Obtainable from the Public Domain 4. The Documentation for the Stone and Webster Reference Nuclear Plant 5. Problem Reports, Study Reports, Position Papers, etc. 6. Stone and Webster Quality Assurance Manual Implementation Implementation of technology transfer and personnel training can be accomplished in various ways. For instance, training can be carried on in Stone and Webster's offices in classroom settings or in an on-the-job type environment. Classes also can be held in one of the PRC's resident hotels in New York City. A portion of the training can be conducted on the power plant site or in one of the PRC's design institutes. Stone and Webster personnel working in China can be rotated on a three-month basis, with three months in China and three months back in the home office preparing for the next series of training programs. A typical scenario of on-the-job type training is in a project environment. I.ETS say that the project is the development of a type of standard nuclear plant, to be mutually agreed upon by Stone and Webster and the PRC. The PRC will be asked to send a given number of engineers with certain qualifications to be assigned to the various disciplines on the project. The work will be supervised by Stone and Webster engineers and specialists. 7. The product of the project will be, for instance, the complete construction bid package of a nuclear plant, including all the documentations such as specifications and drawings. Payment for the training is based on a given charge per PRC engineer assigned for a specific duration. The number and the qualifications of the Stone and Webster engineers and that of the PRC engineers on the project are to be determined by mutual agreement. Engineering and design of nuclear power plants are complex processes which require high technology and quality assurance. In a nuclear plant, there are a large number of subsystems each of which must be analyzed thoroughly with respect to safety, operability, and reliability. Needless to say, a very large number of man-hours must be expended to achieve these objectives. In this type of joint development effort, Stone and Webster will be benefited in that it will have a standard nuclear plant package ready to be offered to our future clients. Financing the Industrial and Technological Cooperation Agreement between the U.S. and the PRC 
signed by President Reagan and the PRC's Premier Zhao Ziyang on January 12, 1984, provides a basis for the orderly exchange of scientific and technical information. According to an exclusive interview with China Daily, Mr. Eugene Lawson, Deputy Assistant Secretary for the Far East and the Pacific in the U.S. Department of Commerce, said that the U.S. government has promised to help the PRC obtain financing, in accordance with U.S. laws, for projects and feasibility studies. Point seven. Presently, the PRC has $20 billion in foreign exchange reserves, World Bank figure as of 1983, a balance of trade surplus, and an excellent credit rating with the commercial. Banks.8 During 1984, the PRC spent $1 billion to acquire Western technology. For 1985, the PRC earmarked $1.5 billion for technology purchase.9 For Stone and Webster, providing technology and personnel training to the PRC will bridge the gap between the 8 present and the 1990s, and will allow the company to participate in the long-term growth and development of the nuclear industry in China. Conclusion The 1990s is just around the corner. There will be a need again for the construction of large central station electric generating plants. In view of the almost certain shortage of electricity and rising energy costs, public opinion could very well change towards greater acceptance of nuclear power as an option to meeting increased power demand, such as the recent change of events on the Shoreham nuclear plant. According to the above-mentioned EEI report, the U.S. is now on a course that will lead to unacceptable electricity costs, and to losses of jobs, income, and economic growth. To change this course, the report said that we must have the wisdom to look ahead, to understand what our situation requires, and to act realistically on that understanding. By the same token, Stone and Webster must take a closer look into the almost untapped technology markets and have the wisdom and foresight to exploit the opportunity before us. 1.T Can Senior Power Engineer GTK, ATT Bibliography 1.Nuclear Follies, Forbes Magazine, February 11, 1985 2.Report of the Edison Electric Institute on Nuclear Power, February, 1985, Publication No. 0685193.US Nuclear Regulatory Commission Policy and Planning Guidance, 1985, New Reg 0885, Issue 4, February, 1985 4. Utility Spotlight, February 8, 1985 5. Electric Light and Power, July 1984, Foreign Power Brief 6. Utility Spotlight, February 8, 1985 7. China Daily, January 11, 1984 8. New York Times, January 4, 1984 9. World Bank Figures, per Mr. Sham Lal, S. Lal and Associates, International Management Consultants, a friend of mine, the end.